here today with Chris Camacho, President CEO of the Greater Phoenix Economic Council. Chris, thank you for being here today. Hey, great to be here with you. I want to talk about transportation economic development. Uh, we know transportation is real key to economic development, and this region's invested a, a lot over the last 30 years in from our regional tax on uh, transportation infrastructure. How has that impacted your activities in economic development? Well, transportation networks across the country, and specifically here in Maricopa County, are the bedrock of our ability to bring jobs and investment here. Mm -hmm. So if you look at core arterials, you look at the 101, 202, 303 corridors, uh, they've precipitated our ability to plan a future employment corridors that are now uh, riddled with major corporation names. So, mm -hmm. you know, we could talk about TSMC, we could talk about Rivulon along the 202. There's a myriad of, of companies that locate near a transportation network. So we must maintain and expand our critical modern infrastructure. Yeah. I think we would have landed the uh, Taiwanese semiconductor manufacturing company uh, without the transportation investments we've made over the last uh, 20 or 30 years. What most people don't realize is that T, uh, TSMC is, is the global leader and pioneer in, in the technology related to semiconductors, virtually in every product that we interface with. And uh, as it relates to their project, that's a four-year labor of love project. Mm. The transportation corridor and location they uh, decided to go to was the I-17 and 303 corridor. Without that kind of modern infrastructure in place and connectivity down the 303 to connect to the 10, we would not have had TSMC locate here. So having the labor, the transportation infrastructure, the pro-business policies, all of these you know, complementary assets lead us to those kind of outcomes. Yeah. So over the last uh, few years, we've opened two new major freeway corridors, a 303 uh, corridor out in the West Valley and the South Mountain Freeway, which mm -hmm. is connected to the southeast and southwest part of the valley. How has that changed the uh, complexion of economic development? Yeah, you know, it seems like overnight when I look at the performers of, uh, performers of Merritt and, and Paul Valley 303 and what's manifested with the multitude of companies that have, have gone along that corridor, we're talking about high wage job creation, advanced manufacturing locations along that 303. That entire corridor connection from I-10 to I-17 is an entirely new corridor for industrial development. Mm -hmm. And in addition to that, I look at the 202, I'm sure five years from now we'll be saying, look at all of the development that occurred along the 202, but even the ease of getting people from the southeast to Coyotes games, to Cardinals games, in addition to what that will develop into as the emerging, emerging tech corridor of the future, that's going to happen along the 202 yeah, corridors. Interesting. So how do we compare to uh, our the regions that we compete with for some of these big, uh, big companies? So most notably, we're competing with the Austins, the Seattles, the Chicago's, these major U.S. locations. And, and our current infrastructure as it relates to our transportation network is viewed very favorably. Mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're one of the top 10 markets for the lack of congestion for people to move about the, the region. But, but also, we have to take into account we need future infrastructure investments to continue to expand as we're looking at getting people east to west across our region. And mm -hmm. so I don't take that for granted. Our clients take, don't take that for granted. Uh, but I think it's really important that we ensure that we maintain our focus on ex investing in critical modern infrastructure. That's what will continue to separate ourselves against these other places that are doing the same. Yeah, interesting, interesting. So uh, we know light rail has really changed the complexion downtown. We see cranes uh, outside our windows here at Ed Mag, and, um, and light rail certainly has played an important component of that. Can you kind of talk about kind of the impact the rail has had on on the development patterns here in the, in the Phoenix area? Yeah, I was joking with uh, the Suns leadership about was it was it the Suns playoff run? Or was it you know, the connectivity now we have between the universities with uh, light rail connectivity? And, and, the, and the reality is downtown Phoenix is booming uh, because of these investments, because of the, the injection of light rail and the connectivity that, uh, that it affords the various submarkets. Um, in addition to that, a lot of our technology companies that are in our pipeline pre-COVID uh, awaited whether or not they'd have a light rail stop in the adjacency of their location. So it does play a role in corporate location decision making and this live work play mindset. They want that ease of accessibility to get you know, movement across the valley. Mm -hmm. So how would you describe our current level of economic development activity here? It, it looks like you're really busy. I've never seen it like this. So mm -hmm. in my 17 years here in Arizona, I can tell you we're currently working with 255 companies from around the globe. Uh, we just signed an MOU with the, the Taiwanese government leadership to really focus on binationalism and support of further Taiwanese supply chain companies and other fabs that want to come here. We're, we're one of the hottest markets in the United States and we have to make sure we continue to make these 
very intentional investments in infrastructure, labor, uh, the public education system, all of these components will lead us to a very prosperous future. So what you're saying is we can't kind of rest on our laurels, what we've done over the past 20 years, 30 years, how great that might have been. We have to continue those investments in the future. I think we have to pivot from a growth enabled and growth economy to an innovation centered one. And that's going to take public policy leaders, civic leaders to focus on these intentional investments. If we make these right moves over the next decade that will pretend the next 30 years, we're going to be an unstoppable market. But it's up to us. We have to take that leadership on our shoulders and, and drive the next 30 years of planning. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Keep it up. Appreciate thank it. Thank you. Enjoy the partnership. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it.